In the last section, we learned what a chemical equation was, and we also learned how to translate it from a word equation. Now we're going to learn how to balance an equation in section 2.7. There's a very important law called the conservation of matter and energy. And basically it says that matter can neither be created nor destroyed, it just changes in form. We can apply this to the mass of a reaction. And that basically tells us that the mass has to remain constant through both a physical or a chemical change. If you take a look at the diagram, you will notice that the reactants of calcium chloride and sodium sulfate have been put in two vessels and on the electronic balance and weigh 300.23 grams. If we are to mix those reactants together, they will produce two new substances, calcium sulfate and sodium chloride, and on the balance they weigh the same, 300.23 grams. And that's because of the law of conservation of mass. Notice that the mass of the reactants before the reaction is equal to the mass after the reaction, which is the mass of the products. So basically what this means for us is that the number of atoms on each side of the reaction must equal each other. This is because matter is neither created nor destroyed. It just changes its form. So how does the law lead to balancing? Well, the number of atoms of each element must be the same on both sides. And to ensure this, we must balance the equation. Notice the equation at the bottom of the page. It's the same equation we saw on the last slide. However, there is a 2 missing in front of the NaCl. If I was to actually look at the sodium on the reactant side, I would notice that there are two of them, but there's only one on the product side. Because of the law of conservation of mass, we are going to have to balance this a chemical equation. And so a 2 in front of the NaCl will do that for us. So how do we begin? Well, the first thing we have to do is start counting the atoms of each substance. In order to do that, we have to be comfortable with two terms. The first is the word subscript. The subscript tells you how many atoms you have. The second is the word coefficient. Coefficients are small whole numbers that sit in front of chemical formulas, and they are always multiplied by the subscripts. If we take a look at the bottom picture, you will notice that H2O on the left has two hydrogens and one oxygen. If I place the coefficient of 2 in front of H2O, I have to multiply that coefficient by each subscript, giving me four hydrogens and two oxygens. The last thing that you need to understand is that when you see a parenthesis, the inner and outer subscripts will always be multiplied together. As seen in this example of iron 3 sulfate, I have the 4 times 3 giving me 12 oxygen and 1 times 3 giving me 3 sulfur. Of course, if I put a coefficient in front of that chemical formula, that would change my oxygen number to 24 and my sulfur number to 6. Remember that coefficients will always multiply by subscripts. Alright, now we're ready for our first self-check. Go ahead and try these two. Start with B and then A. Go ahead and turn off the vodcast. When you're ready to find the answers out, turn it back on for the explanation. Okay, if we start with B first, you'll notice that there is a coefficient of 4. When we do not see a subscript, we assume it to be 1. And coefficients and subscripts always multiply by each other. So we've got 4 Ks. We've got 8 C's. We have 12 H's. And 8 oxygen. If we go back to example A, we've got a coefficient of 2. We want to remember that if we do not see a subscript, we assume it to be 1. And outer subscript and inner subscripts will multiply by one another and then to the coefficient. So for nitrogen, I have 3 times 1 times 2, which is 6. For hydrogen, I have 3 times 4 times 2, which is 24. For phosphorus, it's just 1 times 2. And for oxygen, it is 4 times 2, which is 8. 
So coefficients are added to change the number of atoms in a substance. If we look at the chemical equation seen here, which is a combustion reaction because they see elemental oxygen as a reactant, you will notice that there are coefficients within the equation. Those coefficients were necessary to make sure that the number of atoms of each element on the reactant side equaled the number of atoms of each element on the product side. Thus a balanced equation. So let's balance some chemical equations. The first thing we're going to do is make a table of the elements. We'll make two columns, one that says reactants and the other one that says products. Make sure there's a line between them. And off to the far left, we will put the elements that are found within the reaction, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We want to count the number of each element or ion on the reactant and product side and fill in the chart. Notice that on the reactant side, we've got one carbon, we've got four hydrogen, and two oxygen. On the other side, on the product side, we have one carbon, we have two hydrogen, and we have one plus two oxygen to give us a total of three. Don't forget to add all the atoms of the same element together, even if they appear in more than one compound. Now we're going to use coefficients to balance the numbers. Each time we add a coefficient to the chemical equation, we're going to update the table with the new quantities of each atom. Notice that the number of carbon atoms on the reactant and the product side are already equal. So we're going to focus our attention to the hydrogen. Originally, the hydrogen had four atoms on the reactant side and only two on the product side. So we're going to place a two in front of water that will change my number of hydrogens to four. And it will also change my oxygen number to four as well. Two plus two is four. Now if we look over back to the reactant side, you will notice that there was originally only two oxygen. So by placing the two on the reactant side, I can now change that to four. And we will see now that all the atoms are equal to each other on both sides. When you are finished balancing an equation, something that you can do to allow the grader to know that you are finished with the problem is placing a one in any empty coefficient location as seen here. This is purely optional. You can leave them blank. Just beware that you should never start balancing a problem by putting a 1 in the coefficient. This is something that you do at the end of the balancing process. Hopefully you haven't forgotten your polyatomic ion, groups of atoms that have a charge such as nitrate and carbonate. We're now going to go ahead and balance a chemical equation that has ionic compounds with polyatomic ions in them. So let's balance with polyatomic ions. We're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to make a table of elements. We're going to chunk the polyatomic ions if they appear on both sides. This will be a big lifesaver for you. Hydroxide is a polyatomic ion that is sometimes hidden in water's formula of H2O. So we want to rewrite H2O as HOH if we see the hydroxide polyatomic ion on one side. And you can see that we've done that right here. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to count our atoms. I'm going to start on the reactant side. I've got three hydrogen atoms. I have one phosphate. I have one calcium and two hydroxide. On the product side, I have one hydrogen. I have two phosphate, three calcium, and one hydroxide. I'm going to focus in on the calcium and notice that the 1 and 3 are not equal to each other. And so I will place a 3 in front of the calcium hydroxide. That changes my calcium number to 3 and my hydroxide number to 6. I now have calcium atoms equal to each other. That now brings my attention to the hydroxide ions. They're not equal to each other. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a 6 in front of the HOH. That will then change my hydroxide number to 6 and my hydrogen number to 6 as well. My hydroxides are now equal to each other. That draws my attention to the hydrogens. Noticing that I have three reactant hydrogens, I'm going to place a 2 
in front of H3PO4. That changes that to 6, and it changes the PO4 to 2, and it then equals out the hydrogens and the phosphates. This is now a balanced chemical equation, and I can either leave it as is, or I can place that 1 to finish it off. All right, so let's do a practice together. We've got this double replacement reaction. Notice that I've changed the water to HOH because I noticed that I had a hydroxide ion on the left, and I counted my atoms up. My hydrogens and calcium seem to be equal initially, and it's the chlorine and the hydroxide that I need to fix. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 2 in front of the HCl. That will change my chlorine number to 2, and it will also then change my hydrogen number to 2 as well, which now makes this not equal. But now we have the chlorines to be equal. So in order to fix the hydrogens, I'm going to go over to this side, and add a 2 here. That will then make two hydrogens and two hydroxides. Now finally equaling out that last set of atoms, the hydroxide and the hydrogen atoms. It is now balanced. We can either leave it alone or add ones. I'd like for you to try this practice one on your own. Go ahead and turn the vodcast off and turn it back on when you're ready to hear an explanation. Now as I explain this one, I'm not going to use the chart. This is the way that I balance, but I've been balancing for a very long time. You will find as you get more and more practice with these that you won't need the chart as much, but use it as a guide in the beginning. So the first thing I'm going to notice is that the number of hydrogen atoms on both sides are equal. So I'm going to switch over to the oxygen, and I'm going to notice that I have two oxygen here and only one here. What that means to me is I'm going to put a coefficient of 2 in front of water. When I do that, it changes my hydrogens to 4. Over here, I only have 2, so I'm going to go ahead and put a 2 here to get 4. Now, I think I'm balanced. I'm going to go ahead and place that 1 there, and I'm going to do a check. I'm going to start off at the beginning, and I'm just going to make sure that everything on the left equals what's on the right. 4 hydrogen, 4 hydrogen, 2 oxygen, 2 oxygen. I now know this is balanced. Try this problem out, turn your vodcast off, and turn it back on when you need the answer and the explanation. I'm first drawn by the two iron on the right and the one iron on the left, so I'm going to place a coefficient of two in front of Fe to make those equal. I notice that there are two oxygen atoms on the left, three on the right. They are not equal to each other, but they share the lowest common multiple of six. That's going to allow me to multiply the oxygen by three to make six atoms, and this compound by two to make six atoms of oxygen as well. Now, balancing is a lot of trial and error, and I need you to understand that these coefficients that you're writing can be changed. When I put the two in front of Fe2O3, it changed the number of ions to four. So what you're going to do is just erase the Fe's two and change that to four. And by doing so, you now have a balanced equation. Don't forget to do that final check for iron, for iron, six oxygen, six oxygen, to make sure that it is really truly balanced. So I want to give you a few hints on balancing reactions. The first thing I want to remind you is that this process is trial and error. You don't want to give up. If you're getting frustrated with a particular problem, go ahead and do a couple of others and come back to it. Sometimes the answer was right there in front of you. You just got too frustrated to actually see it. The first tip is that we don't want to ever start by placing a 1 as a coefficient. Remember, we want to leave that for the last step in the balancing process, and it's not even necessary. We want to leave our hydrogens and oxygens for last when balancing. Try to balance all the other atoms except for those. And that's usually because they're going to be found in multiple compounds on the reactant and the product side. And it gets a little confusing when you're having to multiply numbers and then add them on one side and then compare to the other. So leave those for last. If you, if you can't, it's, obviously you're going to have to use them. Um, chunk polyatomic ions. We want to change H2O to HOH if the hydroxide is a polyatomic ion on the other side. If you don't see the hydroxide ion polyatomic ion, you don't need to change the H2O. 
And the last thing you want to do is always check the end result to see if all the atoms are balanced. Especially if you're not using the table format and you're kind of just bouncing back and forth like I did on the last two examples. Sometimes you forget to uh, multiply a coefficient. You don't realize that in the process, but if you go back and check, you'll, you'll understand that you did make a mistake and you can catch it. Um, the last thing I just want to re remind you is that you're going to be doing lots of practice in class. And um, the more you do, the better you're going to get. And the better that you're going to get, the more successful and happier you're going to feel with this. And um, I just wish you the best of luck. Thank you. See you later.